Now that we have learned both parts of the homogeneous transformation matrix, the rotation matrix and the displacement vector, we're ready to put it all together and take a look at how the homogeneous transformation matrix can help us find the location of our robot's end effector. As a reminder, here's how the homogeneous transformation matrix is defined. The homogeneous transformation matrix consists of the 3 by 3 rotation matrix in the upper left hand corner, followed by the 3 by 1 displacement vector, and then on the bottom of the matrix we fill in three zeros and a 1 to make the matrix square. Let me show you an example. Here I've drawn the first two joints of an articulated manipulator and I've filled in the coordinate frames, the joint variables, and the link lengths. We could start finding the homogeneous transformation matrix for this manipulator by finding the rotation matrix from frame 0 to frame 1. We would first figure out how to get frame 0 to match frame 1. We would see that the x0 and x1 axes are in the same direction, which means that we can get the 0 frame to match the 1 frame by rotating around x. If we rotated 90 degrees around x, that would place the y0 axis in the same direction as y1 and the z0 axis in the same direction as z1. That would give us a rotation matrix that would look like this. Here I'm skipping the part where we go and get the x matrix and plug in 90 degrees and I'm going right to the part where we evaluate the matrix to plug in the zeros and ones for the sines and cosines of 90 degrees. After we've written this rotation matrix, which shows how to get the zero frame to match the one frame, we also need to account for the theta one joint variable. The way that we do this is by placing a rotation around z on the left. Now, to find my complete rotation matrix from frame 0 to frame 1, I'll multiply these matrices together. Now I have the complete rotation matrix from frame 0 to frame 1. The other part I need for my homogeneous transformation matrix is the displacement vector. The displacement vector from frame 0 to frame 1 is this vector right here. Remember that I need to write this so that it is true no matter what rotation I have of theta 1. Here the displacement between the center of frame 0 and the center of frame 1 is completely in the z0 direction always no matter what the rotation of theta 1 will be. So the displacement vector will be 0 in x, 0 in y, and a1 in z. Now that I have these two parts of the homogeneous transformation matrix, I can plug them in. I'll write the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 0 to frame 1 is equal to the rotation matrix up here in the upper left hand corner. the displacement vector over here in the upper right, and then I fill in three zeros and a one at the bottom to make this matrix square. This is my complete homogeneous transformation matrix from frame zero to frame one. Now I'm going to erase this work that I did so that I have space to show you the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. 
to find the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2, I'll start by finding the rotation matrix from 1 to 2. The first thing I need to find is the part of the rotation matrix that gets frame 1 to match frame 2. Because frame 1 is already in the same orientation as frame 2, this part of the rotation matrix will be the identity matrix, which means no rotation. Then on the left, I have to fill in the rotation that accounts for the joint variable. This is a rotation of theta 2 around z. Now I multiply these two matrices together to get me the complete single rotation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. The other piece that I need to get the complete homogeneous transformation matrix is the displacement vector from frame 1 to frame 2. The displacement vector is this vector right here. Right now, it appears that the vector is equal to a2 in the x1 direction. But we can see that this will not always be true as theta2 begins to rotate. As theta2 rotates, the center of frame 2 will move its position in the x1, y1 plane. So we have to break up the position of the center of frame 2 into its x and y components. The x component will be equal to a2 times the cosine of theta2. The y component will be a2 times the sine of theta2, and the z component will always be 0. I now have all the information I need to write the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. I'll slide over my previous matrix to give me room to write this in. I'll fill in the rotation from 1 to 2 up in the upper left hand corner. Then I'll write the displacement vector in the upper right hand corner. And I'll fill in three zeros and a one. Now that I have both of these homogeneous transformation matrices, I can use them to find the complete homogeneous transformation matrix all the way from the zero frame to the two frame. Here's how we do that. The homogeneous transformation matrix from the base frame, 0, to the end effector frame, frame 2, is equal to the multiplication of the homogeneous transformation matrix from 0 to 1 times the homogeneous transformation matrix from 1 to 2. I'm going to do this multiplication and write out the answer here. Now that we have the complete homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 0 to frame 2, we can interpret this matrix the same way that we built the original matrices. In other words, this square right here, this 3 by 3 matrix, tells me how the end effector is rotated relative to the base frame. This vector right here, which is in the place of the displacement vector, tells me how the end effector is positioned in space relative to the base frame. This first number tells me the x position of the end effector relative to frame 0. This number tells me the y position of the end effector in frame 0. And this number here tells me the z position of the end effector in frame 0. I see that my 1 got lost here. There's supposed to be a 1 at the end. 
I'm going to illustrate how this is useful to us by building an Excel spreadsheet to calculate the position of the end effector given any combination of joint variables. I'm going to start by creating two variables that I can change. The variable theta1 for the first joint angle and the variable theta2 for the second joint angle. Down here, I'm going to calculate the homogeneous transformation matrix. I'm going to make this a 4x4 four four matrix. The bottom row is easy. We have three zeros and a 1. Here is where I enter the rotation part of the homogeneous transformation matrix. I want to enter my angles in degrees, so I'm also going to automatically convert them to radians to use in my equations. So to convert the angles into radians, I can use Excel's radians command. Then I can use these values in my homogeneous transformation matrix. So the first value here is equal to the cosine of theta1 times the cosine of theta2. The next value is equal to the sine of theta1 times the cosine of theta2. and I'm going to continue filling these in. And here I'll enter my displacement vector, which also requires the value of the link length uh, A2, so I need to create a cell for that value also. Uh, and it looks like I also need A1. So let's create a new row here so that I can also type in a value for A1. Now let's enter some values. Let's suppose we're working in units of inches. And let's suppose that A1 is 12 inches. And let's suppose that A2 is 6 inches. Now the x position of my end effector is equal to this value right there. The y position is equal to that value right there. And the z position is equal to that value right there. So right now the end effector is positioned 12 inches off the ground and 6 inches to the right. Now I haven't entered anything yet for my angles, but this is calculating what it would be if they are 0. Let's take a look at what would happen if we would turn theta 1 to 90 degrees. This is telling us that our x position is now almost zero. In fact, it's zero to within numerical precision. But now the y position is six. That means that our end effector is now six inches into the page. And the end effector is still positioned 12 inches off the ground. Now, what would happen if we would rotate theta 2 also 90 degrees? That would make our end effector 
positioned straight up in the air above the ground. If we would type in 90 degrees for theta 2, we would expect the end effector to be up a distance a1 plus a2. In other words, we would expect the x position to be 0, the y position to be 0, and the z position to be 18 in z. Let's see if that is what happens. We see here that our x position rounds off to 0, the y position also is 0, and the z position is 18 inches, just as we would expect. Now here's how we can use this to prevent disaster from happening as we move our robot around. Let's suppose that we wanted to pick something off the ground, and we need to know how far to move theta 2 in order to pick up this object. Let's also suppose that instead of our second link being 6, let's suppose that our second link was longer than our first one. Let's say that A2 was 18 inches. In this case, it's possible for the robot to hit the end effector into the ground. Let's take a look at what happens if we put theta 2 to 0. And then, let's see what happens as theta 2 becomes less than 0. In other words, as we angle the end effector towards the ground. Right now, the end effector is positioned 12 inches off the ground. When we move theta 2 to negative 20, the z position of the end effector moves down to 5.8. In other words, the end effector is now 5.8 inches off the ground. Suppose we decrease the angle to negative 30. Now the end effector is only 3 inches off the ground. At a negative 40 angle, the end effector is now only 0.4 inches off the ground. When we go to an angle of negative 50, the z position is now negative. In other words, the end effector has hit the ground. We can use this homogeneous transformation matrix in our code to avoid going to positions that will result in disaster, such as smashing the end effector into the ground. Here, I've shown you an example of how to use the homogeneous transformation matrix in an Excel spreadsheet. In lab, we're going to use these same equations that we find as a part of the homogeneous transformation matrix and write it into the same code that is controlling our robot to avoid commanding the robot to move into any position that we don't want it to be in.